good morning everybody today's class is about emotion and motivation as you all know the emotional tone and behavior is controlled by the limbic system to understand what is life life includes pleasure it can be ecstasy or when you are too excited there will be elation it can be sadness anger and at times there is anxiety which can result in severe anxiety and disorders there can be fear rage placidity or you can become docile or despondent or you can be very anger the intense anger can be hostile or the environment around you can be a hostile environment so to understand all this we need to understand how the interconnections or the two way communications which takes place between the cortex and the limbic system limbic system as you all know is a system of or a group of cortical and subcortical structures that lie beneath the neocortex as you all know the 3 mm gray matter which was the cerebral cortex which was the main cerebral cortex enhancing all the functions from the frontal to the temporal with parietal and occipital but inside the cerebral cortex that is these are originally the term limbic means border It was used to describe the border structures around the basal region of the cerebrum so we need to understand that the entire neuro circuitry that controls emotional behavior and motivational drive involves limbic system so we will see what emotion is so the whole emotion encompasses pleasure elation ecstasy sadness and all so on and so forth so this is what the changes in your life and finally the emotion can have two components the physical and the con and the conscious feeling the physical sensation as you all know so what are the two components the physical sensation and conscious feeling the conscious feeling is always controlled by the cortical structures which are the cingulate gyrus and prefrontal cortex the emotional component which is mainly due to the peripheral signals has changes in the endocrine resulting in autonomic and skeletal motor responses and through this we have what is called the subcortical structures which are the amygdala the hypothalamus and brain stem you all know the cingulate gyrus which we have been discussing is a very important structure which lies around the corpus callosum so amygdala lies in front of the hippocampus so in the peripheral component so emotion as physical and conscious feeling so the conscious feeling is mainly controlled by cortical structures which is the cingulate gyrus which lies around the corpus callosum the emotional part as you saw there is a autonomic changes which is also is controlled by subcortical structures predominantly the amygdala hypothalamus and always there is a peripheral component which prepares and helps in communication the preparation can be either general or specific it depends on the type of emotion if there is anger if there is grief if there is rage if there is motivation so to understand more about this there is a model of basic neuronal system controlling the emotion so whenever there is a stimulus there is a neocortical processing and sub neocortical processing accompanied with skeletal motor and autonomic control system mainly due to the peripheral signal there is filtration and finally evaluation how well 
the intensity of the emotion is about so to understand there are different theories of emotion james land's theory canon bird's theory sachetter theory arnold theory in james land's theory emotions are cognitive responses to information from periphery so they mainly cognitive responses to information from periphery whereas canon bird's theory it is based on all or none emergency reaction where role of hypothalamus and thalamus is there the vera sachetta theory the feelings of cognitive translation of ambiguous peripheral signals if somebody angers you how the translation takes place at the cortical level arnold theory involves autonomic responses are not an essential component of emotion so to understand we have what is called emotion which involves mental and physical component in mental we have the cognition which which we try to find out as the cause the effect and cognition so the components of mental is component or cognition affect and cognition when you hear a sound which you recognize as due to bomb explosion so the cause is bomb explosion which is the cognition part of the mental component and you are frightened that is the affect and when you want to protect yourself you want to take shelter that is your cognition so we need to understand that emotion has three parts i mean the mental part of the mental component has three parts wherein wherein it is very specific that this cognition is a desire to take action whereas the cognition is awareness of the sensation and cause for that sensation affect is the feeling produced by the sensation the second part is the physical component which involves the autonomic and skeletal motor changes whether you get frightened due to skeletal muscle contractions or there is autonomic changes in heart rate and blood pressure where it can be it can result in sweating so to understand this whole emotion which has two components that is the mental and the physical component we need to know how they are processed and integrated which is the neocortical processing and subcortical processing so so we have a limbic system which is nothing but limbus means ring it is in, includes cortical and subcortical structures which form a ring around the brain stem so the cortical components are are mainly the the cingulate gyrus which is lies around the corpus callosum the parahippocampus the hippocampal formation which lies in the medial wall of the temporal lobe and finally the uncus then we have the subcortical structures like amygdala which lies in front of am hippocampus and the septum or septum lies in midline anterior to the hypothalamus so limbic cortex is the oldest part of the cerebral cortex it is made up of primitive cortical tissue called as called as allocortex which is the inner ring and the transitional cortex which is the outer ring so you can see that in animal kingdom the limbic cortex occupies a larger area which plays a role in emotion and olfaction so the size of the allocortex and the extracortex has not changed significantly with evolution in humans whereas in rat cat it occupies a larger area so in animal kingdom there is larger component of limbic cortex so limbic cortex was first described by paul broca in 1878 which you will understand there is a broca's area now you understand the speech the motor word part as it controls the vegetative functions so it is called as 
visceral brain or by Maclean in 1949. It is called limbic lobe as it forms a ring around the corpus callosum. So the structures which are included in the limbic system are the cingulate gyrus, then we have the hip, the isthmus, the hippocampal gyrus and uncus. This is the limbic lobe which is formed by two gyri of cerebral hemispheres, mainly the cingulate gyrus and hippocampal gyrus. The limbo, limbic lobe is phylogenetically the oldest part of cerebral cortex. So parts of olfactory cortex, parahippocampal gyrus is also there and the hippocampus is an extension of the hippocampal gyri that extends into the floor of the lateral ventricle. So what are the related subcortical nuclei which is present into the inner ring? They are mainly the amygdala which is located on the tail end of the caudate nucleus, the mammillary body of hypothalamus, the anterior nucleus of thalamus which lies in the floor of the so we need to understand that there is an outer and an inner ring which encompasses the all the two gyri which is the cingulate gyrus and hippocampal gyrus along with that we have the four nuclei the amygdala the anterior nucleus of thalamus the mammillary body and the hypothalamus so this is the mainly the functional anatomy to understand more about them we should see that how they are interrelated with the cortex so it is almost subcortical in nature it is present beneath the cerebral cortex or in other words around the basal region of the cerebral cortex so the entire neuronal circuitry is mainly controlling the emotional behavior and so and motivational right and you can see the hippocampus is ghosted into that that is an extension of the gyri so once again the cingulate gyrus the frontal lobe so it's nothing but it consists of parts of frontal lobe temporal lobe on either side and namely the hippocampus, the septal nucleus, cingulate gyrus, anterior thalamic nucleus and amygdala. So you can see in this how it originates as orbitofrontal cortex, then ascends upwards as cingulate gyrus and continues beneath the sparocampal gyrus ending as uncus with the subcortical structures mainly portions of basal ganglia which is the striatum the ventral part of the striatum, the anterior nucleus of thalamus and hypothalamus. And one important thing why hypothalamus is highlighted in the red is, despite being very small in size, around few cubic centimeter, it has two-way communicating pathway with all levels of limbic system. In turn, the hypothalamus and its closely aligned structures send output signals in three directions backward and downward to the brain stem mainly into the reticular areas of mesencephalon pons medulla the upward towards the highest centers of diencephalon and cerebrum and into the hypothalamic infundibulum to control and partially control most of the secretory functions of both posterior and anterior pituitary glands so that's the reason it's a two-way communicating organ where it is located in the middle of the limbic system. So physiologically you should understand that hypothalamus is a very important structure controlling the limbic function. So as you all know the connections of the limbic is mainly you can see how major apparent and apparent communications of the limbic system are given. You can see it has connections anteriorly towards the phonix. Phonix is the main projection of the hippocampus, uncus and amygdala to the hypothalamus. In hypothalamus it is mainly the mammillary body. 
the second afferent is the pepe circuit by means it, it is namely the vic d acer that is the mamelothalamic tract so you can see how the mamelothalamic tract the anterior nucleus of thalamus and in turn the cingulate gyrus can be excited by corticothalamo hypothalamo cortical circuit so phonics says hippocampus to the mammillary body the striae terminalis which has connections to the amygdala to hypothalamus the mammillary body to the anterior nucleus of thalamus the median forebrain bundle which is the septal nuclei with the lateral hypothalamus and hippocampus these are the afferents so it's a two way communication with the cerebral cortex and the limbic cortex so this is what is pepe circuit which is a very important connection where the neocortical activity influences the emotional behavior however the connection between the limbic cortex and the neocortex is limited so the reason if you understand the features of emotion or as follows the duration of emotion cannot be regulated by conscious effort the emotional responses are prolonged but due to continued after discharge it is continued for a longer time if somebody scolds you you remember it for a longer time so that is due to after discharge or the response exceeds the duration of the stimulus producing it so we need to understand that in simple terms there are different neurotransmitters which plays a role in all the emotional components for example if a motivation and drive we have a mesolimbic system which is from the ventral tegmentum to the midbrain which controls motivation and drive the tubero infundibular system which is the arcuate and periventricular nucleus to the median eminence which regulates the prolactin the nigrostriatal system which mainly controls the muscle tone posture and voluntary system so this is what you can see how the whole system is controlled with the cingulate cortex the septal nucleus and the hippocampus playing a role in its connection from striatum and we have the connection with entorhinal cortex which plays a role in all fraction and the locus cerulis this is the main connections if you have a cross section and now each of this from the spinal cord goes towards the median eminence and then to the thalamus and finally to the so there is not only dopaminergic system we have noradrenergic system in new terms the locus cerulis is called the blue eye where it ascends to the spinal cord cerebellum hypothalamus thalamus basal forebrain and neocortex it modulates sensory and motor sig signals and you all know the descending analgesic system is mainly controlled by this pathway the tegmental system or the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus the nucleus tractus to spine solitarius to spinal cord brain stem hypothalamus which has a pituitary control with cardiovascular and respiratory control so you can understand this how the locus cerulis is playing a role in controlling this how they get activated the third system is the serotonergic pathway which is mainly from the median raphe nucleus to spinal cord the hypothalamus the limbic cortex neocortex this enhances the mood which controls the circadian rhythm which is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus and also plays a role in pain inhibiting so the three systems of the through neural system which are mainly neurotransmitter dependent are the mesolimbic dopaminergic pathway where the neural system control reward and punishment mainly the activating the reticular activating system and we have the noradrenergic along with serotonergic path system so you can see how the each of these neurons tend to 
release the neuroserotonin in our aging system. So as we discussed, the pepe circuit is nothing but it's a internal circuit within the limbic system where the hypothalamus, hippocampus connects with the mammillary body through the fornix that is mainly the mammillary body of the hypothalamus which in turn has connection towards the anterior nucleus of the thalamus formed by the mammillothalamic tract and finally the cingulate gyrus. So we need to understand that Pepe circuit is a very important circuit which helps in genesis of emotion. So if I talk about hypothalamus and the limbic system which are intimately concerned with emotional expression and genesis. So the complex pattern of emotional mental state is achieved by this Pepe circuit. The orbito insular temporo cingulate area of the cerebral cortex in particular are ultimately concerned with this autonomic changes. So you can see the Pepe circuit is mainly formed by the hippocampus mammillary body and this is a internal circuit which plays a role in genesis of emotion. So all of you must be very much aware that this tract which is connected by the fornix from the hippocampus to the mammillary body and the mammillothalamic tract connects to the anterior nucleus of thalamus and finally the single end goes cortex which connects back to the hippocampus. And there is another circuit which is the basolateral circuit which plays a role which has connection with the stria terminalis from the amygdaloid complex. As you all know amygdaloid amygdala recognizes threatening facial expression of other individual and it estimates the danger and evokes fear response in the host and the dorsal medial nucleus of thalamus. Finally, as we told, hypothalamus is the central structure which has two-way communications. So it also has connection with orbito temporal cortex. So we have the different functions of limbic cortex, mainly the control of visceral and autonomic functions, perception of smell, emotional exteriorization, fear, rage and placidity, behavioral responses and sexual behavior with feeding behavior, memory and learning with circadian rhythm, mainly the biological rhythm. So to, to make it simplified, limbic system is concerned with autonomic responses sexual behavior, emotions like rage and fear, fear, motivation, olfaction and memory. So in memory when I talk, without hippocampus there is no consolidation of memory. So in today's class we discussed about what is limbic cortex, what is the component of the limbic system, mainly the limbic lobe and the other structure that is the cortical and subcortical structure. As you all know, the limbic system is the site of origin of instinctive behavior, motivation and emotion. And emotion has two components, the mental and the physical. The mental component had three parts, which are the, the phonation, affect and the cognition. And finally, we came to know what are the connections through the fornix and the pepe circuit and the two circuits, the pepe circuit and the basal lateral circuit. And if you must understand that we have different neurotransmitter related system like the mesolimbic dopaminergic pathway. This pathway is involved in evaluating reward and enforcing the action based on the incentive. So it mainly has drives so drugs improve the activity of dopaminergic pathway, exert positive reinforcement for the reward system. Drugs which block the dopamine receptors have negative reinforcement. So that's the applied aspect of that pathway. Then we have the noradrenergic pathway and, and also 
the sector energy pathway how pain inhibition or the prolactin secretion so next class we'll see about what are the types of emotion like motivation or reward punishment and some applied aspect thank you